Cool Cats, Cool Dudes, and Daniel Fark's Cheesecake. Welcome to this, We All Love Leeds, the show where we discuss our love of Leeds. More specifically, in National Break, we're going to do a breakdown of the season so far, and a light preview looking ahead to Friday's monumental clash at Watford. Something I don't think many Watford fans will ever say about a Watford match. <laughs> It took me a minute to pick a fight with Watford. Sorry. Um, how are you doing, Mr. Ben? Very well, mate. How are you? I've had You're a bored. lot worse week. So. Yeah, uh, you can guess why. You can absolutely guess why. International break, unfortunately. But I'll tell you, someone who was not bored, Anders in here two, sorry, not two, an hour ago with, hello, lads. Hello, how are you doing, Anders, in Sweden? Hello, Anders. And Spencer in Virginia with good afternoon. So good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, uh, Spencer. Yep. Yeah, uh, hello to anyone who's joining us as well. Although we tell tend to say hello as you roll in. Um, in a, a slight break from tradition on this show, generally after what I do my random findings of the week in the in the news or of the mean world of football, it will be handed over to Mister Ben, who. Uh, he tends to take the international break shift. And uh, we'll explain more when we get into it. Uh, but just some random things I found. Uh, domestic football is out of here this weekend. In the meantime, we'll be running uh, international friendlies. No, no, not, not another boring international break. I mean, personally, I love them in the context that you can get stuff done that you don't normally get because there's actual football on and stuff like that. But um, Did you watch it yesterday? No. No. No, no, I I enjoyed the Saturday evening. uh... Don't get me wrong, I followed along with the score, but I wasn't really that focused on it. That that wasn't very hard. Exactly, exactly. Um, I want not that not that we do tend to get political on this show, but I do have this meme, and I think there's no harm in getting your thoughts on it. Uh, which is the greatest nation on earth, England or Brazil? What do you make of the of the kit, the, the thing, the kit thing? Oh, is that representative of the kit? That's what uh, is on the back of the England collar, let's just say. We've just got some people up in arms, let's just say. Okay. Yeah, it's fair enough. No. My my thoughts initially were, I think it's a bit of an own goal. Like I think what you call starting a conversation actually turns into people generally getting very heated, needlessly. It's more but, Scottish, isn't it? It's uh, more. Apparently, more it's representative of multiple fringe groups and stuff like without re- quoting the literature on it, but it's all it's very much a like we're all. Cut, oh, it's a work shirt then. And, yes. Right, right. I won't be yes. buying it. Then. I, I'll be honest. I weren't going to buy it. I wouldn't have bought it with a St George's Cross on it for hundred and twenty four pound. If it was a lead shirt, maybe. And even then, I probably, I wouldn't pay one hundred and twenty four pound for a lead no. shirt. I mean, don't clip that up when it does end up to be one hundred and twenty four pound for a lead shirt. But still, but still, I'm times will change, obviously, and hopefully, I'll be getting paid more money at the time. So, anyway, that being said, uh, but it, uh, they called it. A playful update, uh, Nike. So uh, we went and found a playful update on the Nike badge. But let's see how they like it. Anyway, anyway. That being said, I think we should... There's no harm in it. It's international break weekend. Let's get into the Sunday roast. Sunday roast. Down to a whole jingle, then, but um, anyway, one second. Uh, disgrace having that on the England shirt. Nike should recall all kits immediately. 
or told them on. Uh, <clears throat> I predict our new Harry Kane-less England will score even better than our previous team. Well, that's the end of me. And Kyle Walker picked up hamstring injury. Look how worried everyone is. Um, I should have slapped Lolo's face on that, really, shouldn't I? Yeah, that's definitely Lolo. Yeah. yeah. And, As uh, we'll get to. <laughs> I need a small club. Here, use the Tottenham. <laughs> In a change, there could be a number of clubs there. Uh, one more about Liverpool. Uh, but, Mum, we're supposed to win the quadruple this season. It's our year again. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, right, this is my vision of Liverpool's future. Steve Bruce up as the manager, which means naturally you get Solomon Rondon, Andy Carroll, Jeff Hendrick, Isaac Hayden, and well, that's about it. But, um, well done, well done. Uh, I wanted a club where I feel at home. As soon as I visited Liverpool, I saw a city already full of scruffy, see you next Tuesdays, in a baseball cap and tracksuit. I knew it was the place for me. <laughs> makes, makes sense. Um, uh, also, speaking of Klopp, so as Jurgen Klopp is leaving Liverpool, we take a look at the Premier League's top five all-time greatest managers. So that's Ferguson. So you will, but he's obviously in top five. Pep Guardiola, Arsene Wenger, Jose Mourinho, Claudio Ranieri. He's won it as many times as him. With a worse team as well. So makes him better, in my opinion. Uh, saying this, uh, I know Ben's got opinions on this as well. Um Breaking news, Leicester City have been charged by the Premier League for breaking financial rules during the last three seasons in division. When are they going to deduct points from Manchester City? That's how I feel about found it. guilty. Yeah. Yeah, I watched, um, watched some of the stoop. And I thought, Lolo, you're very desperate at any given advantage to try and win this league. You forget you had a massive advantage last season. You still threw it away. But we all know they're guilty, but not been found guilty yet. Have they? It's not been official. So let's just sit and wait. The part of the discourse that really irritates me, and I did say it on the show, I don't know if it made it into the clip, but every time something happens relating to financial fair play, everyone's priority is, what about Man City? But it's 115 charges. I, obviously, it shouldn't have been allowed to get that far. That's the mm. obvious error in the whole thing. But one error, or sorry, sorry, one charge is obviously and logically quicker to investigate and deal with than 115. So when everyone's like, why ain't you done Man City yet? Yeah? It's like, What's to say they're not? Exactly. And, you, and people only care because of how it affects their team. Yeah. We, we had to wait for Everton and inevitably we're down because of that. Yeah. And Forest as well. That's two teams last season that would have finished below us on the points deduction. Yeah. So you might have to wait till next season, Arsenal. I mean, that's probably going to be the case. but And it might even be a year after that because, I mean, not this is a Premier League show yet, touch wood, but ultimately you're still going to be in the Premier League next year and you're still going to throw more money at trying to beat them. So... Just beat them. Just beat them this season. There you go. Well, they play them next week, Ben. This time next week, I believe. Yeah, I know. Will know the score, so <coughs> come back and beat them. That's it. But saying that, uh, speaking of speaking of uh, of uh, dire clubs, uh, that team's good in the EPL. That team's good in Champions League. That team's good in the FA Cup. And Chelsea, well, good at saying good morning. I imagine. Um, I did have this. I did put together this. Uh, 
uh, an 11 of Premier League flops this season. Just, uh, just someone's opinion. Just someone's opinion. Uh, and, and for no reason, here's Mutu. Also of that team. Complete with the cocaine nodes drops and everything. Anyway, not anything wrong with that, but according to Premier League rules, it is massively illegal. Um, we all know a mate who was so unlucky at gambling that they could bet on Alan Shearer to be bored at the weekend. They'd turn on their TV and see this on Match of the Day. That did tickle me. Um, and that is the Sunday roast. So with that, I'll hand over the reins to Mr. Ben, who has uh, put together a delightful little show for you all related to the lead season uh-huh. so far. I sent you a few slides. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it seemed a lot nicer and more professional of me. Am, I in, am I in charge of the clicking, clicking then? You know what? If you want to be, it's up to you entirely. All right, let's. I need to catch where we are. Then. Excuse me. This is poor. So basically, we thought we'd just have a little review of the season, see who uh, Mr. Tom's favourite players are and favourite matches. So we'll start with your favourite. Result, I think. No, no, this is your. I do believe you think this is the most important result this season. If you'd like to tell us what it is, Mr. Tom. Uh, I believe our most important result would have been the win against Leicester at Ellen Road. Uh, I think that's unfair. I mean, I, I suppose it's the obvious pick considering the context of the game, uh, the fact that the title would have been done had we not beat them. Mm. Um, And I know people will say, well, mathematically, that wouldn't have been the case. But no, but they would have gone on the impetus from, like the same way that the impetus we have taken from that result to win game after game is what they would have logically done. So Uh, you can sort of see what, what the ball frauds Comments were actually meant by it's important to us. It was more important to us, but inevitably, it's uh, every game's important. So, oh, I didn't think but, he was look, wrong in what he said. No, um, the game could have gone. The, the game could have easily gone horribly wrong for us with the chances that they wasted, but. On the on the whole, a very massive important result, and we've sprung on from it. Obviously, we had to go up straight away, but we wouldn't be sat top of the league now if we hadn't won this one. So, no, good. Uh, I sort of agree with you there. Um, equally, I feel that that result was equally as important for reasons that. It halted there, ten in a row, and it sort of for me that was the complete performance this season. That was our best performance. I I I I agree with you fully in that. Look, now like it never actually entered my mind at the, uh, when you asked me, but the more you think about it, we played better in a one nil win at Leicester than we did in a three one win at home to Leicester. And the difference being is they had the ball in that one, whereas we had the ball in that one. But what this showed for me is what a good side without the ball we are as well. See, we've all seen what we can do with the ball. I mean, it took a little, a little few months to get going and learn how to break them teams down, i.e. Bamford, Rutter, whatever. Depends how you want to see the change of the yep. side but um this this game for me was yeah our most complete performance to say that we didn't have a shot on target until yeah it was the last minute wasn't it yeah 
Yeah, it was on pretty much last kick of the game, weren't it? I mean, <laughs> arguably. Yeah. I'm not sure there's a minute in between, but I agree with you because what that tells me, and I know I know the eye test on a match is a lot more important than looking at the stats, but it, it tells me that we we very much had them you know how like a boxer, like a giant as a midget, and he puts his forehand like the palm of his head on there. It was basically like we had them at arm's length and they just kept yeah. like pinging shots over, wide, around, out of desperation because they needed the result, obviously. And we just weren't giving them a sniff. That's it. We made them look ordinary, didn't we? It's, um, everyone put a shift in that night. So that was, that, that was for me, it was, it was equally important. But obviously, we were both against Leicester. Which brings us on to our next rivals, I believe, which was your favourite result and equally my favourite result this season. It's the 4 0 thrashing of Ipswich. I think this game, it wasn't as. I thought the other game was a bit more fun for the neutral, the 4 3. And I thought we we could have won that one 4 0 if it weren't for stupid mistakes. But. Early in the season, we all know. So, but why did you pick this one? Uh, it, it was. There's, there's, to to put it a simply way, December. When we do look through our fixtures, you're going to discover very, very apparently, December is by far our worst month for the season. But in between the poor results was this, and I think this set a standard that. It basically, it might. What annoys me about it, and I'm not annoyed that we've beaten four 0 But what, in hindsight, annoys me is that other teams have not took the blueprint of how yeah. we beat them four 0 They've got the worst defense in the league. It's like Chef Wednesday. I was, I was furious. Wankers of the week last week. How do you not score against them? You don't get beat six 0 six two, six three, five. You've had a go, but that that was just it just pisses you off, doesn't it, how they come to play against us and based on our game against them, with with respect to our tactics and that, when Leaf Davis ends up where Junior Furpo tends to end up as well. So when he ends up basically on our wing down our end of the pitch, and then we score on them fifteen seconds later because we expose that gap. Why aren't other teams doing that? And I know saying it and doing it is a lot is a different prospect, but I just get the sense that other teams are like, "Oh, we just uh, let them pin, pin, uh, pin them in and things like this." But uh, big up to you all. Thanks, JS One. Very cool. But ultimately, yeah, it is annoying. I, it just it irritates me. It's like some I don't know whether it's rational or irrational, but I'm just like, why aren't other teams? And because people in football that coach football teams are not stupid people, but why aren't they seeing what I'm seeing in relation do to? Do you the think they the do, do? you still think they've got a thrashing coming? Yeah, I really do because of the because of their defending. Yeah, do you think it's Southampton? I hope so. My brood, sorry. No, no, no problem. Uh, I, 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 the, I don't, ultimately, I don't care who beats them. It's just the fact. I take the draw in that one. Yeah. I take the draw in that one, and then take the draw in both actually. So, and then we beat Southampton. Should well, be good. Yeah, I mean, we can get into that more because we do have some stuff for the remaining team games, but um. Ben, was there anything else that you uh, had? Because uh, uh, to 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 peek behind the curtain a little bit, uh, we did. Ben did ask me some questions earlier in the week relating to the season, and then he's put stuff together based on the answers to that. Hmm. I hope he doesn't mind me saying. No, no. I just had a. I don't know. It was party feeling for this game, wasn't it? Just went from strength to strength, start yeah. to finish, domination. I was Made nervous until the first cool. goal. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get me As wrong. The way are. they played, I, I would not say it's which played defensively. Well, they didn't. That's why we won, is because they kept going forward and then we kept exposing the gaps that they left. Um, but 
it it was just oh, really enjoyable. Yeah, enjoyable before Christmas right. as well. It was, and then Preston ruined it. Okay. With dirty tactics. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but still, so, we just, I just don't think we were on it that day. Any any other shout out games that we don't have uh, stats for? But yeah, like uh, I, I personally feel our best forty five minutes of football was at Swansea. Yeah, uh, unquestionably, it was it was it was just perfect. Like. I know we should have had more goals and Nonno should have had more goals, but that first half was just cutting the team to shreds. Tell me a game where we shouldn't have had more goals. Other than that one on screen. (laughs) (laughs) I think the actual, the biggest hindrance to our season, and I don't want to dig individuals out, but we we've not had enough games where we've actually murdered teams. No, do you, put, do you put that down to Barker calming it down at half-time or making changes? Yeah, that's or true. Or do you just put it down to you just being professional? I mean, I'll, Don't get if, me wrong you win one-nil, if you win 1-0 and you win 4-0, the outcome's generally the same. You get three points. Mm. Uh, Don't get me wrong, like right, under Bielsa, when you're six one down at Old Trafford, it's nice to see that you're still trying in the ninetieth minute. But when you're one nil up and you're still trying to score, I like the calm approach a bit better. I do, I do. Get me wrong, I love the entertainment from Bielsa's football, but sometimes it. Yeah, but no, yeah. no, I, I, no, I, I do think that. It's fair to like both approaches. Like, just because you're going to praise the fact that Farker football doesn't give you as much of a heart attack is not necessarily attacking Bielsa. Like, let's get that clear. Because no. um, Bielsa is the greatest man alive. Like, let's get that straight. Um, but it's nice sometimes to just comfortably go 2 0 up in a game and feel like you're going to see it out. Like, during yeah. the games themselves, you don't have that feeling. Like me personally, um, it the anxiety. No, and, and and if you've ever played it at like a lower lower level, that's what you do. You just try and score and try and score. It's very less tactical, and it, it it's good for the neutral. It's it's not good for the ticker. That's all. <laughs> but never be if you score off it. It's that's what you want in it. It's entertainment and. I agree. So I agree. Else is yeah. Football ultimately, uh, I suppose where we do differ is like because obviously you're very headstrong on football as entertainment as an enterprise, whereas I've always felt like first and foremost is a sporting contest. But there's obviously a happy medium that you need to achieve to some degree because a lot a lot of the things teams look at if your team ain't doing well, Ben, the first thing that people come out with is it the football is boring. Hmm. And I think it becomes em- entertainment once it, you become pro- professional, and it becomes a job. You become an entertainer, then. So, but it, inevitably, yeah, it's a sporting contest. I suppose, yeah. like, like for example, Blackburn, who we will be playing at some point in the future, are they're not doing that well. But they've got a player that's going. They're going to sell this Smodix, who's going to. Someone's mm. going to take a punt on him. But um, I feel like their fans, like when we played them before, the, the feeling I got through reading like their fans' opinions was very much like they just thought the football was crap. and died. More, more than the fact they were losing, they just didn't like that watching them lose was boring. So, in yeah. that degree, I think we've become quite spoiled. And I don't mean we're acting entitled to that. I think we're quite lucky in that we've managed to get away from that. Yeah. Because cause first and foremost, if you're winning, it doesn't matter how you win. So, at least in the games that are not exciting, we are grinding out results. Yeah. But if you're Finding on the losing end of well, that. Yeah. yeah. But if you're on the losing end of that, and you're the team that loses 1-0 in a dull, 
boring crap game and that's a regular thing then it becomes a problem and your fan base gets discontent obviously we've got a little bit of green the look it's all going the right way so players mr tom okay brings us on to your 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 first pick of i asked you to pick three players i did this season and your first pick was uh well i've picked uh georgino ruta uh understandably and this is actually gonna fly in the face of a lot of what i've just said about like being more clinical and stuff because imagine the player he would be if he could actually shoot yeah. accurately uh what what would be the word not not uh clinically clinically perfect thank you sir um yeah imagine the player he'd be and and i say that because he's a fantastic footballer just watching him so anything is joyful yeah so uh, he makes you happy doesn't he? yeah he does uh, i i'm happy even watching him try to play that game with uh you know when he was doing the charades with they were drawing the hippo and he kept going hippopotamus it's definitely got ADHD that way. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, as uh, anyone who can see, um, in my opinion, he's massively underperforming on his goal expected goals, of course, like yes. like his five goals under, right? But doesn't matter because his assists is astonishing. Like it was in 15, 16. Is this old? I don't know. I think he's on more than that, is he? Unless no, unless they've got cup games in there. I don't know. From I think he I has a cup before. assist. He he yeah. definitely has a cup assist. So I think he had one at Plymouth. They take deflections there, off as well, don't they? Yeah. Uh, in here we have Hello Brownie. Hello, mm. all right, lads. Just thought I'd pop in and say hello to my favourite Leeds fans. It's nice to hear from you, Brownie. Thank you, sir. Uh, sorry, well, what am I doing? Sorry, sorry, I'll come out of that. Um, what do you, what's your take on Rua? I love him. It's a joy to watch. Well, I I'll put it another way when he when he does well, he's routier or routier or whatever he wants to be called. But when he's had an off day, I'm like fucking raw. Georgie. Yeah, but but I I, I would admire that he's. He's had off games in the last month where I've sat here and gone, mm. he's not playing well at all. Like every time he's got the ball, he'll lose the ball, things like this. But you keep him on, for the, you can't take him off, partly because there's no one you can replace him with on our bench, really. But oh, but he's the sort of player who he, he only needs one moment. He's the Zidane of our team, and I don't say that yeah. lightly. He's the player who you know when he's not playing well, he's still capable of the one moment that changes the game. And so many times I've sat here and gone, he has not played well, but then here's the slide of him as the sky bet man of the match. <laughs> he's going to need to build a new room for the amount of sky bet man of the match trophies he's got. I mean, I wouldn't want to build a room for that. I mean, I'm sure they probably can't no. have been, but... That's very kind of you. Keep you first one, one. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. But more clinical, because I think it's it's not even really a selfish team thing. It's more a case of like we enjoy him scoring because of how it, happy he gets. And then we get, get happy because he's happy. I get the David Batty feeling when he scores. Do you know, like when Batty used to shoot and he'd miss and then. When he did score, it was a beauty. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, you, you, yeah, it's a happy, the happy feeling. Like you get a better, you in... get better let go out of it, don't you? It's... Yeah. There are players in your team that are employees, and that's fine. And like you support them because they're they're representative of your mm. team and your fan. But he is obviously something special. Clearly, yeah. there's something special about the man. And I admire 
I've, we've said this multiple weeks, but I admire the fact that the man could have cut his losses and gone to a team that are in European football. He probably wouldn't have played, but he would have gone there. Um, he'd have topped up his salary and all this, but he was like, no, I want to make this work, like a few of the others in the club. So it's an opportunity to play regular football, build a name for themselves, let's say. And I'd argue he has certainly built a name for himself. Definitely. And he's he's built a platform where he can be become a, a Leeds legend. He certainly can. And hello, Russ Morgan, our main man, the questions man. How are you doing, mate? Good to see you. Evening, Russ. Uh, so... That brings us on to his partner in crime. Certainly his partner in crime. Mr. Crescencio Somerville, the man with the greatest name in football. Possibly. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, So what is it about him that you would say has made him one of our players of the season? His goals for, for one. Massively important. Um, found a big scoring touch. Not so much the last half a dozen games, I'd say, but he just seemed to have been playing with a freedom and a, a joy. Which, you know, I think he's finding it harder. Obviously, he's getting double marked a lot because we're coming second time round now, so everyone's played against him. Hmm. So it's inevitably going to be harder for him, but. Luckily, we've got Nonto or, or James on the other side. Or... That's a key part of it. That's a key part of the drop-off. Is that he, because he, he's getting double marks. Sorry to interrupt you, but because he's getting double marks, uh-huh. because of his performances in the first go-round, when it's come round to double-dipping everyone, um, we're now swinging the ball over to <coughs> Wilfried Nonto, who's, who's there now. Or Dan James. I mean, it was usually him or James for the first half of the season. But now want Nonto is back in the in the frame and is he's playing very well. Let, let's be fair. He, he ain't made my top three, but to be fair, even if he was the best player, he wouldn't be in my top three because of his decisions over the summer. But yeah. like this this get that uh people can say that's silly of me or whatever, and that's absolutely fine. But that's just how I feel about it. Um, I don't hate him, but I'm just not going to herald him as one of my favourite three players of the season. When you try to not be huh. one of our players this season. Yeah, that's fair. And um, But his presence on the other flank has basically meant we now stop giving him the ball automatically, which I think was our go-to from August yeah. to January, let's just say. As you see here, though, Ben, he's he's outperformed expected goals, so can't no complaints. He's uh, underperformed expected assists, but obviously, in fairness to him, that's not really under his control. Plus, two of those have probably gone to Ruta, who we've established yeah. is very uh, underperforming in that area of the field, let's just say, despite being one of the greatest Leeds players we know. So. They're great lads still. He's still, uh, he's still got a big part to play for me this season, Cree. Yeah. So his goals aren't dried up. No, the composure so. of the man. I do want to give a special, like, a... a... Ob- obviously, Rodon's not in my top three, but he was very, he's been obviously instrumental this season. But I do mm. want, of a player like no one's really going to expect to even be part of this conversation... I want to give a special shout out to Joel Peru because without his composure against Preston, this undefeated streak doesn't happen. Mm. It just simply doesn't happen. Like without, because if we hadn't beat Preston, that fit, see, and I know other league shows have said this in the week, Glenn, it's it's a it's it's the correct comment. If we had not beat Preston in January, uh, after um. It's one of the first games in the new year, wasn't it? After the Birmingham game or the cup game against Peterborough, I think. Peterborough. Long story short, we don't beat them. We are not in this conversation for promotion. Maybe even maybe the playoffs, yeah. But 
not in this situation. Mm. And to take that penalty in the 90th minute or what is it, 94, it was the last kick of the game, regardless. Absolute cause ice. Yeah. Got so, fair I've, to you. I've, do you. Do you think, um, back to Cree, yeah. do you think Furpo on the overlap is also in yeah. his, his output? I do think it has, but also think, but I do think it's giving great help in context of like his actual performances because I think it's built relationships on the flanks because we're going to get into that with Somerville, uh, not sorry, with Nonto and Archie Gray because I think their little mm. partnership out on the right is, is borderline magical at times. Yeah. So, shall we move on then to your third and final choice? Who was? Just the man is is a two position wonder. Clearly, uh, he was imperious in midfield this season, but then to move mm -hmm. back and cover a long term injury and still not look out of place, like I wouldn't put him back in midfield at this point. Personally, no, I'm, I'm... sorry, go on, if it broke, don't fix it. Yeah, so yeah, I agree. In broke, don't fix it. Yeah. So these are, these are his, yeah. these are his Sorry, uh, passing stats because these are different stats for some reason. Yeah. I had it on the international stats but on the other app. So these are more midfield, even though also defending in there. But these are his passing stats. So. I've got, I've, I've noticed like if Pascal Stoic was fit tomorrow, I'd still play Ampadu at centre back because, as you said, mm. if you ain't broke, don't fix it. And I just think he, I think the players we bring in to replace him at, in midfield have performed better than, and I'm not, Pascal Stroik was fine at centre back. But I just feel like the upturn in form is not coincidental um, with. Don't get me wrong, if he did go back into midfield, it wouldn't upset me too much. I'm sure he'd be fine. I think but it's, it's, uh, hands down, best midfielder in, in the league for me. I think it's best player in the league to me, for me at the minute anyway. So. <coughs> Interesting. Uh, it's a difficult one, but I'd put him... Obviously, he plays regardless. Like, if he can, he plays 46 matches. Mm. At, like, not even up for debate, but I just... He is the top Leeds player this season. Better than Ruta, better than Somerville, better than Nonto, better than, better than Archie Gray. Obviously, I understand why Archie Gray, <laughs> you know, learning on job. Yeah. Which the best player brings me to my logic. You're the top player currently in the top team currently. So yeah. currently you're the top player in the league. Yeah. If anyone disagreed with that, I'd love to know why they think he's not the top player in the league. I mean, they're free to say that. I just I would love to know mm. why they think Dewsbury Hall's better. Or not everybody's everybody entitled to their opinion and everyone sees football different subjective mm. at the end of the day but in my opinion and yeah. there's a lot of not just Leeds fans would agree Obviously, many more wouldn't but hey ho yeah that being so we have a look at his heat, heat map I think we have a yeah, heat I found map his round, heat too. map's quite fascinating because I imagine it, it not many heat maps would actually be that heavy all around the pitch I mean, naturally, we get his customary like thirty yarder that goes into the top of the stands per game. Understandable, but just mm. imperious everywhere. Reliable, S fundamentally sound is what I would call him. He does the simple things correctly a lot. This needs a call. Yeah, Lee goal for him would be nice. It, it's it's yeah, got that, Ben Wright. Be yeah. Sorry, mate. 
Well, that was a good. That was a good goal. That Ben White. Yeah, it'll be a batty yeah. moment again. Yeah. He scores. I get the feeling that he he is is similar to you know how like I I get the feeling that a lot of the players want Glenn Kamara to score. Like, because the mm. amount of times he finds himself up the pitch and he'll get to crack a shot off and it doesn't go well. But I get the feeling they want him to score. And I get the feeling that will happen with Ampadu on maybe like the Southampton game or something like that, depending on how the, the game stays, yeah, the season stays. The weird way of football's written. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now we've said that, it's probably, not, I'm going to totally undo that. But generally, same as like, uh, Chelsea win the league, Clau Makaleli scores the penalty that wins it and things like that. Just anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So I'd like to add someone who I thought's been massively important to this run. And get straight to it. Mr. Bamford. Mixed people's mixed views. He seems to have won everyone round again. One me round. He's confident, so. Oh, yeah, definitely. He, he never really lost me. Obviously, you're disappointed when he misses sitters like last season at Leicester, misses the penalties this season. Well, I'm, I've never been a sling hair player, you know, unless unless you go to Manchester United or you do what the Exodus have done this season. End of the day, he had offers. Bamford, he could have gone. He'd be stuck around. But no player wants to be injured. No player wants to be out of form. And no player wants to miss sitters. But it's yeah. it's no coincidence that since he's come back, we've become a, a different beast. We play better football with him up front, right, than with Peru up front. It's to put it bluntly, and despite what I say, like, I always rate Peru for the composure for the penalty. But the fact of the matter is, Bamford does the running that Peru doesn't, which then means that you find that Somerville is probably more available or... You, I, I don't know how to explain it. The, it's the glue. Cause, it's the glue to yeah, the, the front the, unit. Because yeah. he's running, Somerville doesn't have to do all the running because he hasn't got to make up the slack for what Peru isn't the, isn't that player or doesn't put in that effort or what, however you however you slice it. But Patrick Bamford enables Jorginho, Jorginho Rute to be a better footballer, in my opinion. Yeah. Which definitely. means that the team is a better team. Yeah. And... I'd still, don't get me wrong, I'd love us to go out and find someone that can do what Bamford does and 20 goals. That'd be amazing. Seven, seven goals in 10 starts. There you go. Because like it says, 27 matches played. But the reality is he doesn't come on and score goals in that 17 games because he's not the sort of player that will turn a game on its head in the seven minutes you give him when you're 1-0 down chasing the game. Most players are not that player. But he can control the game from the start. Big influence. Like, for example, I believe he came on... He came on at Huddersfield, right? Yeah. Yeah, and scored. Yeah. Mm. How you doing, BX? Good to see you, mate. Sorry, Ben, I'll give you that. Yes. Give you the control back. Um, no, no, no. If you want to take off, you take off. No, no, no problem. Uh, he, but, yeah, no, but no, massive I... shout-out to Bamford. Massive yeah. shout-out. Don't get me wrong, I've, ma I've made my comments about Bamford, and I feel like I was justified at the time I made them. Um, I'd, I've always admired the fact that we've on multiple times tried to replace him and he's always won his place back cannot underestimate the respect you have for a footballer that wins his place back and even if they do it one time it's impressive but like he rebuffed Enketia, um Rodrigo he kept Rodrigo out of his natural position because Bamford was better in it at the time hmm. Um I still maintain we wouldn't be in the situation we're in now if Rodrigo hadn't been brought on at Accrington Stanley. But a lot of ifs and buts and all that. Reality is Jesse Marsh did bring him on when he didn't need to. It cost the stand the line. 
because what I feel Rodrigo would have got the two or three goals that would have kept us above yeah. water, let's just say. But but what happened happened. We've gone with Bamford. But Bamford basically we bought Peru to replace Patrick Bamford. And Bamford won his place yeah. back. And Peru's goal return isn't actually that bad. But the performances no. weren't as sparkling, let's just say, across the... Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate for Peru, but basically our form at the end of the year slash when the transfer window was available, I don't think really helped him. Although although he's, he is contributing, and he's contributing quite well, yeah. it, it's not about where we need him for his goals. Mm-hmm. The fact that he's a better footballer than Peru, yeah, is what we need him for. Peru's a better finisher. Peru knows but where we don't need is. a finisher. Yeah. yeah, we don't need a finisher because he'll chip in, and you've got got the wingers and Ruta will chip in as well. Well, Blackburn has a finisher. <laughs> They've got the top scorer in the division, probably. I, I don't know if he still is. But he scored loads of goals. But the, the 10 players around him are dog shit. Mm. I mean, that's probably really harsh for me to say. But you know what? Well, I'm we had that at, with Ross right? McCormack, didn't we? Pretty much, yeah. That kept. That was why we were a championship mm. club and not a League One club, is because we had Ross McCormack, uh, Jermaine Beckford. Um, Becky, yeah. Becky. There was a, we always had a player La, La, La that Saga. kept us above the line. The so saga. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, can you remember there was a time when we were sitting again, God, I hope we get this guy on permanent. And it's like, but why? In high I, I watched why? his debut. Yeah. I went to watch the debut. Was it 5 0? We, we beat Burton. He got two. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. Yeah, How many we'll times have some of this. It's like nine months <laughs> later, it's like, nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. No. So fickle, aren't we? <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I'm openly admitting that I'm a fickle fan. Like, when things are going well, I'm going to say they're going well. When they're not, I'm going to say they're not. Like, I it's don't think that's just necessarily fickle bad. fan. It's, 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 it's just fickle in life, isn't it? You, hmm. Things are good, you're happy. Things aren't good. There's a domino exactly. effect, do not it? That's very fair. Very fair. Um, so it brings me on to our last player that needs a mention and definite mention breakout season the crown prince the prince not of hair on his chin the prince of flamingo land yeah is he, is he tall enough to go on the rides i have it's not for me to say about Lord Archie Gray, but he is what a player. What what a lad. Just of obviously, if he killed someone, all the Leeds fans would go, We saw nothing. Like we'd all defend him. Just I'm man, man of, yeah. well, of course he was at your ass. But how can he be at your ass when he was at my ass? But anyway, um He's a important play. He's an important cog to this because it could have gone very badly had he not done as well as he did. Could have all fallen Definitely. apart. But it takes me back to last season with him. They said if he hadn't got that injury, obviously from that dirty scumbag. Yeah. That Aston Villa, yeah. he, he would have played, he would have featured last season a lot more heavily than he, he he did. So for me, if you if people thought he was ready in that league, then he was ready in this league, didn't he? But I just feel it the the, the stars have aligned nicely for him. And look, you. you, you you can put the path there. You've got to walk it yourself, do you know. And he, 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 he has done that. So, yeah, definitely someone to I watch. I still can't believe they took the goal away from him. Um, they it, in high. You knew they, they would. Were, you knew they would. Yeah, they were right to take because it obviously it's clearly an own goal. 
but at the same time, for him, I'm personally disappointed. Um, <coughs> I mean, the, the, you only have to watch like two cool. replays It'll of cool. it to be like that. Never that was clearly going wide or something like that. But yeah, yeah, he will. Even I if thought like, he, I two thought of the players, Roberto Carlos in it, you know, I thought it was, it was yeah. definitely going to come back. I mean, if anyone could, it'd be Archie Gray. But I suspect that all I reckon. Um, Ruter and Melier are going to lift him up on a corner just so the ball falls on his head or something. That's like the reverence this man has at Leeds. And, desp- and I hear lots of things about his younger brother, who's apparently even better. But I say mm. apparently, like, not seen him kick a ball in my life, so I don't know. Just could be massive hyperbole because that's what people do. But we'll co- we'll when it happens, we'll comment on it. Yeah. We're talking of goals, it's it's what's written down here that's just made me laugh. <laughs> so goals, Mister Tom. I think we agreed with this one, didn't we? So. Okay. My feeling on the goal of the season for Leeds thus far, uh, or, or obviously everyone's the Leeds goal of the season. Is obviously, Patrick Bamford levers the ball in the cup game. Like, that mm. question. But my favourite goal this season, which I believe yeah. is the question I was asked by Mr. Ben. It is. Is, is actually when we're 2-0 up at Swansea. And we are no, still we'll going for it. it. Yeah. And I'm going to run you through it and how it is written. <laughs> Willie right. behind Gray. <laughs> I think... I've, see, I think this is a key aspect to the move because despite how it plays out, it's really important to note that when it starts out, he is literally behind Archie Gray in the move. Like, the when it can starts, just, he, he is behind him on the pitch. Sorry, please, Ben. Yeah, can I just add to any viewers that might have uh, any visual impairments, this is not an audio palm. Yeah. The next highlight is... Grey spot, Willie run. Well, this is then, the moment where obviously what they've worked on the training ground is about to attempt, be attempted. Mm-hmm. I think it's fair. So, to say. long ball to Willie. Willie and turns left. <laughs> Oh, this is the best one. Willie shoots inside. <laughs> it was nuts as well. Was it nuts? <laughs> it was nuts, yeah. Willie, Willie scores. <laughs> it's so precise. It, the ball actually rolls up the net and comes out of the goal. But, yeah, I like them ones. Yeah. Italian United style, yeah. Yeah. And Willie celebrates. He's never been as tall in his life. But that being said, uh, Ben, also, I did manage to go to the trouble or the effort of actually finding the actual tweet that Leeds then put out about the goal. And he has the legendary caption. Goal. Goal. Is this the tweet? Yeah, the legendary caption, Willie sticks it in. There you go, guys. It's hard. It was surprisingly hard to find because you had to. I had to work out how many L's did they put in it. How many N? It was five. It turned out there was five L's and five N's. But it's been viewed six point three million times, obviously, because of what they wrote. Um, but the reason I feel like it's the best goal is it because obviously it's a training. You, you, they just off the cuff haven't executed this. This is a thing they've worked on. They had to have. And it yeah. works perfectly. It's also what I would I would say it's Willie's special move. Because multiple times since this happened, he has tried the exact same thing of cutting outside and then doing the shot across the keeper. My Willie's got a special move too. I'll, be, I'll bet it has, sir. <laughs> I absolutely bet it has. Um, Excuse me. BX Gunner... Uh, Hello, everyone. 
would like to do a collab. That that's a conversation to be had. Who, with with who? Hello. Yeah, um, um, the Leeds United Nation yeah. podcast. I didn't know we had oh, a nation, cool. but no, obviously, have, thank you, thank nation. you for making well, your presence known. You. It's very cool. Um, also, BX Gunner with now that's a big Willie strike. Certainly is. Certainly is. I mean, welcome we are contactable all, all puns on Twitter. Um, yeah. yeah, so I took the liberty of uh, looking at the form. I went, I went in. Uh, obviously, there's the last five, but I went all the way up to the, the last thirty, which I find is equally impressive. So obviously, we all know where we stand with this. Looking good. So the last ten, we take. Obviously, the two points dropped. Ipswich, Southampton, so into the last 20, still top, the gap's bigger, but I find that's more impressive, the last 30. That is genuinely impressive, because, I mean, cut a long story short, we've, we've had our blips in the season, like, like I said, December was atrocious, other than the Ipswich game. Mm. That includes December as well. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the key thing you, you'll you find, like, I don't think you can find any Leeds fan that doesn't point to the defending as to why we're in the position we're currently in. Because we've rode our luck at times, but the fact of the matter is we've rode our luck better than Leicester and Southampton and Ipswich have. Well, it's like Bill Belichick says in the NFL defence win style. Yeah. Certainly and that does. man knows what he's talking about. He does, even without Tom Brady. But, well, well I was going to say, do, do we, is Ruto or Ampadon or Rodon, Rodon, Tom Brady? Anyway, anyway, I digress. But the home form of the championship. I believe Ipswich have one home loss this season. Yeah. Who was that to? Oh, I don't know, but I've heard that I've heard they're a sparkling team with a great away kit. <laughs> Bill Bella cheap. <laughs> <laughs> inflate, inflate, inflate the balls, eh? Or uh, was it the inflatable ball? Or what? Or what a little bit it? less impressive. Training, uh, listening, training. Yeah, I'll, that the away form is still respectable, but obviously yeah, we we're only to... we're only a win off. We're only a win off second, aren't we? So yeah, and I feel. If you're in the top two or both, you usually go up. Exactly, exactly. Um, when well, you do go up. Yeah. I mean, uh, are you going to put up the current table or... You want me to? Yeah. I was going to say, I do have it. I've only done top six. I don't think, I don't think we need to, to be looking at yeah. Unless you want so, to uh, reference the games to go no that's that's fine mate um i do have a thing for the international players of ours but we can do that after we do the other stuff the yeah uh what's the other stuff um if you want to do i can bring up the let me find it yeah i'll let you take the reins i'll bring up the do excuse me then the because Director John made this, and I think it's only fair that we do go show it. Um, I was going to do... Cut a long story short, this is going to be a list of Leeds' record this season. Uh, on a game-by-game -game basis. Uh, has that come up? Yeah. Cool. So, obviously... KG 2.0 <laughs> But um he doesn't have his own director. But um uh so we start I I'd argue the start was quite ropey, but uh, in hindsight it was quite good considering we've able to catch ourselves back on it if you get what I mean. Yeah. Sorry. Um that's how it works. So yeah, so 
like for, as I was alluding to earlier, like um, he's actually compiled like the win loss on the right. But uh, that being said, oh, like December is genuinely atrocious because well, we took three defeats in December. And a magnificent win, yeah. Yeah, like I suppose that papered over the cracks of that. But then something happened after that West Brom game where just pure magic, pure majesty occurred. Yeah, Stroud got injured. <laughs> Don't know why that That's happened. what happened. Do you think it was be moving Ampadu backwards created? Well, I just feel that, look, Gruev was good enough to prove good enough to sit there. I just feel that that, that, that partnership's just, that trio just solidified it, yeah. Not, not. I'm a, I'm a packer personally, but. Oh, I mean, any go at Pascal Stroy because he's had a great season up until he got injured. But uh, I just feel that that's what's fixed the season. We do miss his height on tacking corners, but mm. generally that's about his passing. It. His passing is great as well, but <laughs> the Welsh will be more. It's not unfair to say. Um, so. Uh... So obviously, for anyone who actually did want to zoom in or something so, like that, it's there. Out of the games to go, we've got Coventry who we drew with Sunderland beat us. Uh, I have something for that right here. Uh, this is the remaining games. Obviously, the home and away have been designated. Uh, there's no real so we, reason we can't win out, as I believe they say in America. But these are the teams we've, we've lost most points to us. So we've got two defeats in there, have we, yet? Um, two draws. From yeah, previous fixes. You can overturn them. Of well, course you can, and that's what we will do. Yeah, yeah. I mean... when When's their... Uh, when have they squeezed the Leicester game in then, just before? So... Uh, Leicester. Leicester Southampton's the 23rd of April. And we have that week off. So, or we have mm. that midweek off, obviously. Can, can I shock you, Ben? Can I tell you something truly shocking? Do you know that Leeds versus Blackburn has been moved to Monday night on Sky? I don't believe you. Why would they put us on Sky? We'll have to move our, our, our 31st televised game of the season. Can I shock you? Just, um, I think um, there's only the Coventry game that's currently not going to be on TV. I'll tell you the thing about it that surprised me the most is that they didn't move it to Friday. So West Brom are probably playing that Friday. Oh, Friday think. Nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? The 13th of April, right? So... Let me have a look through the good apologies to everyone. I'm I'm prone to doing this kind of nonsense. Um so the 13th of April. So I'm gonna look at the twelfth of April. Oh no, that Friday night game is Plymouth is versus Ipswich Leicester. Middlesbrough. Oh yeah. Ipswich Middlesbrough as well that that game. That week. Okay. And Southampton Watford. Well, according to this, it's uh, we are playing Blackburn at twelve thirty on the Saturday, not the Monday night. So please excuse me, I've maybe misread that previously. But um, yeah, but it's got moved for television because of course it has. Um, not looking for Hall to hole on Monday. Let's hope it could be a good Friday against Watford. I'm very nervous about this because Leeds and Easter, Easter. doesn't usually go well <laughs> together. And it killed the Bielsa first season. It just annihilated yeah. it. That Wigan Look, at home. We're not the Leeds of old. We are we are literally a better let, team. Let, let, yeah, let's stop waiting for it to go wrong and just 
Let's not be pessimistic anymore. New era. No. I mean, New ultimately, Ipswich have got... You know what? I'll say this. If Ipswich can get the win against Southampton and get sank at Norwich, then they probably deserve what they end up with. Yeah. Because well, that's going to be our game. Whoever goes up deserves it. Yeah. Whoever goes up deserves it. Yeah. And no matter what you think of them or fair play to all four teams this season. Yeah. And you've got to give I Ipswich mean, the biggest credit. You... you no matter where they finish, they're the one team that you that shouldn't be in that mix, and they've stayed there all season. So you've got to give them the biggest credit. Mm. It's frustrating though because we've beat them twice, and it feels like why is no yeah. one else just fucking doing to them what we did to them? But you know that being said, and yes, you're right, Conche. Fucking Neil Mope. Was it Neil Mope? Anyway, um, yeah. So that being said. I still think we have the minerals to do it, right? So, yeah, I do. Uh, sank a bit more fun. Or let's have a look at our international contingent, uh, if you don't mind, Ben. Oh, um, you take over me. Yeah, we. Uh, Dan James obviously was on the score sheet. I believe it was Thursday night. Uh, Rodon and Purdue Roberts all played, and unfortunately, Glenn Kamara had a torrid night. He was our worst performer with the 6.4. And then I think it was brought on with the 6.9. Best player was Connor Roberts. That doesn't surprise me. He's been, he, he's been oddly influential when he does come on in games. Leeds Wales fielded half the Leeds team. It's a, that, ma- that a match had half the Leeds team. 25% of the players in the match, the entire match, played for Leeds. Including Glenn Camera for Finland. Um, obviously, Willie Freed Nonto, um, he was the captain. Captain Willie for Italy under 21. And he had every chance to go into the Euros, which will prove his agent wrong. I hope he does get picked for Italy simply because he should then fire his agent. Oh, I'm pay like that. Well, so how do you feel uh, about jo- how do you feel about Josie going to Spain? I feel a little let down. Him and Gray, future England. He had a... Yeah, but he could he could join he could join Rao Valcano tomorrow, and we'd all be like, we'd all forget about him. It'd be fine. Yeah, I, I can understand why he'd want to play for Spain. Are they sniffing it, around him, like? Well, it's not even that. <laughs> I'd imagine he feels like there's a lot of sniffing going on around the Leeds team, but I'd imagine he feels like. He's more chance of playing for them than the England team because he's got to displace Harry Kane. And I think players do look at that kind of stuff when making their picks because it's not necessarily the family things that they think about. Like Glenn Kamara's playing for Finland ostensibly because he knows he'll play. Yeah, Andy Townsend, Republic of Ireland. Yeah, exactly. Like some people just want to play football. They just want to play international football and it doesn't matter who for. To some degree, yeah. but but saying that, speaking of playing in national football, Ilya Gruev played the full ninety minutes as Bulgaria defeated Tanzan- Tanzania. 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 Yeah, that's right. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, forget what I said. I was, I was just thinking of Tasmanian Devil, something like that. But yeah, so there he is, and they won one nil. Uh, and it was where was it in Azerbaijan <coughs> as a place to play football? And more importantly than anything, though, Archie Gray scored in his debut for England under 21s. He, I think, he played. I, I was gonna say, I think he played. I've got the numbers right here. Played 10 minutes, pure 100% accuracy in everything he did, not one thing went wrong. Ben's player of the season. Or Ben one of Ben's top three, I believe. 
He's definitely a young player, really. I pointless even having that as a vote. Um, Tony Cascarino, not an Irish. If anyone player, else is going to turn up. <laughs> When they when they do the under twenty one awards, this is going to be and the nominees for yeah, I uh, uh, it, it is age. He, he'll just wear what they tell him, and how will they tell him to wear it? I imagine, He'll be like yes sir, yes sir. Um, it be and the nominees are for the Archie Gray Leeds under twenty one of Player of the Year award. It's Archie Gray. That is all. Anyway, that being said, um, but I say more importantly, and said Archie Gray, even more important than Archie Gray, Junior Furpo played 82 minutes against Aruba for the Dominican Republic national team. I believe it was his first cap for him, wasn't it? He finally gave up on his dream of playing for Spain, I'd imagine, in a more liberal sense. Fun. Yeah. But that, oh my god, yeah. But saying that, the real, the real, the highlight of my weekend was this photo. Junior Furpo and Senior Furpo in a photo. And Madame Furpo. Oh, the 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 Furpy arc of the of the family. Archie should play for Scotland. Hmm. But he was born in England. Should Dan James be starting? Uh, I I personally feel Dan James is best deployed. <laughs> that's true. That's true, Conte. His, they, aren't they the world champions? Like, they... <laughs> his mum and she's got a facial expression of it. Like, it's just drag some old woman out of a, a residential <laughs> home. <laughs> she looks lost. <laughs> she's like, where am I? Who are you? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, <laughs> Yeah, Dan James is clearly best deployed, in my opinion. Like you bring him on with ten minutes to go against these grizzled thirty-year-old championship defenders, and he just punishes them with pace. Because he doesn't even have to be that good on the ball at that point. Because a lot of the stuff that goes right for him is just where he chases stuff down, where no one thinks he'll catch it, and he does. But more importantly than yeah, exactly, exactly right, and um, more importantly than anything. Just look at the majesty on the moustache of Senior Furpo. How many people do you think Senior Furpo was killed? Sorry, that was Dead a question I asked in my head. Yeah, Dead too many, too many. Yeah, yeah. Well, that stand was full of people until they complained about misplaced pass from Junior. Now nah, they're just buried under the stone. I, I have a feeling he, ta he takes the tash off. And it's, it's like the arrow, the arrow in the Guardians of the Galaxy. And he just whistles. Yes, he goes. 100%. Uh, Shorty James is better than Somerville. Oh, I still think they're deployed like really I useful. Think, I, think, I think the band James were better than Jimmy Somerville, yes. <laughs> I think that's about it. Uh, Russ Morgan said Brian Danielson won the best, the Brian Danielson best technical wrestler of the year award. In the, that's factually true, actually. It's factually true. He won the award that's actually named after him because it was named after him when he retired and then he unretired and then won it. So, yeah, that was a thing. Um, Senior Furpo looks like he's a member of a cartel. I mean, I can't tell you which one, though, because. Junior for both definitely faster than senior. Don't let senior hear you say that, Conche. We're living in dangerous circles here, guys. I could not. I could Look not at the say stare on senior circle. He, yeah. He's staring through the camera at you now. If you have a nightmare <laughs> tonight, and if senior Furpo enters your nightmares, we cannot be held responsible. Julius Furpo's so happy though, he's so pleased. Senior Furpo's like, I can't believe you brought me to this shit. And Mrs. Furpo's like, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> it's very uh it's very, who who are what who are what are your names? No, wait, sorry, no, that's that's really bad taste. I shouldn't have done that. Um 
I'm about to see the good Domino's player. No, no, I'm not going there with all the four. No, no. We actually like Junior and Celia, and we're doing this. Um, Senior's our hero. He gave the he's, he's the loins of the uh, yeah. junior. He sired. <laughs> and we're not going down this sired. road. <laughs> yeah, he sired the greatest left back in the history of Leeds United, and I'm not talking about Tony Dorigo. They should actually replace Tony Dorigo with Junior Furpo on commentary, even even when he's himself playing. Like he can actually join the commentary box when we're on the attack. I think Dorigo would do all right in this league. Stick him at left back. Dorigo's he's fine, he's just, but he's not junior. Terry Cooper. <laughs> wow. Tommy Cooper. <laughs> right, so before we get on out of here with the question of the week and all this, I, for my own personal amusement, I obviously go through the tweets about Andy Hinchcliffe because he's a regular fixture on Wanker of the Week. So, obviously, let's just give him his version of the Lifetime Achievement Award of the Wanker of the Week. Okay, um, And as Ben may have made, the X-rated, shut up, you wanker. It's Andy Hinchcliffe tweets. The top ten Andy Hinchcliffe tweets about him that mention his name or have anything to do with him this week, although because it was an international break, I think he got the week off. So it was just the what appeared in the top of Twitter, basically, like that have contained his name. So anyway, um I expect them to go unbeaten. Andy Insley thinks Leeds have what it takes to come back to the Premier League. And he looks like he's on the vinegar stroke right there. As they call it. Apparently he he was actually really positive about us in that clip. Shame it ain't the case on a Friday night when he's in the commentary box. I mean, he's cheering the other team on. Not literally. It feels like it. Um, Andy Inchcliffe is such a fucking soggy <laughs> ball sack. <laughs> yeah. Who brought that? Um, uh, it was by Lady JB3 on Twitter. He's getting followed. I have no idea what he did. I have no idea what he did to do to achieve that, because I've discovered loads of teams hate him or think that he's against them. Um. Anyway, uh, Adam Hurry from the Football Clichés podcast wrote, "Name Adam Hurry. His occupation is telling people who tweet me about Andy Hinchcliffe's co-commentary that it's actually Don Goodman. It's basically like Too they'll say, the they'll pot. send him stuff that he, mistakes he's made or stuff like that, so he can get roasted." Um, referee Stephen Martin and Andy Hinchcliffe shouldn't be in their current position if this is their standard of work. Astonishingly poor decisions. That was when uh, he got a uh, root got scissored, I believe, and he said, Oh, that yeah, and he didn't touch him, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was, no, he, was he went to me, he touched him, and then he dived, and then he, in the yeah. eye, might have clipped him. Yeah. Um, this week in 95, Andy Hinchcliffe's left foot nets a last gasp winner at Loftus Road. State of that pitch, like playing on the snooker table. <laughs> to be, it was a nice goal, to be fair. I did see it. it was a... But obviously that then led to him believing he's Lionel Messi. Clearly. Um, well, number six. Why wouldn't you? Uh, Andy Hinchcliffe and the Sky commentator cracking jokes about Sean Dyche looking like a croupier. In the black armband he's wearing is a mark of respect for the young man who died last week at BMD. Is it me or is this in really poor taste? Because he's fell foul with some Everton supporters there. I'm not sure what the armband has to do with looking like a croupier, but yeah. Are you guys watching USA versus Mexico on Paramount with Jesse as a pundit spewing shit? No. I go well out of my way to not watch that man. Yeah, thank you. I will watch that. Thank you for letting us know that that's a thing. That <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for him to just take a job and prove that everything he says is, is right, like that his metrics did have him as eighth in Leeds for the way his football was branded. But anyway, um, 
It's 26 years to the day since this lovely bit of skill and composure from Paolo Di Canio at Hillsborough. Here the Italian ties Andy Hinchcliffe into a knot as he bears down on goal before expertly poking the ball home. I watched this. He turned him into a pretzel. He was like in, out, in, out, round the goalkeeper. Paolo Di Canio was some player, and especially for doing that to our Andy Hinchcliffe. Anyway. And Hinchcliffe, if it goes to 2 0, it's game over. The game goes to 2 0. And Hinchcliffe, if it goes to 3 0, it's game over. Clueless and Sky TV are fucking shit. He done that in the Sheffield Wednesday game, didn't he? He was like, or if this goes to 2 0, it's game over. Mm. And then he went, oh, if they get a third, it's game over. It's like, shut up. That's probably the same night. Yeah, that is the same when the, night. When, yeah. when the whistle goes, it's game over. Yeah. <laughs> Andy Eastcliff on co-commentary. I just want you to stop saying odd shit. <laughs> and the final one. I hate Andy Hinchcliff. Straight to the point. Like yeah. But obviously, in my opinion, the best one was Andy Hinchcliff is <laughs> such a fucking soggy ball sack. Um, he will never coach again. He... He'll keep getting jobs to avoid it, I suppose, because he'll have to then put his money where his mouth is. Because he's made a living off, basically, everything I did in Austria worked. And it's like, because you had the ball given to Erling Haaland. Hmm. You coached Erling Haaland in a farmer's league. Of course you were going to do really well there. Um. Steve Nicholl on ESPN FC hates Leeds. Well, it doesn't surprise me. That surprise me. He's ex Liverpool, I believe. Um, mm. Anyway, uh, I will do the Rangers table last. Uh, Mr. Ben, is there anything else you uh, can think no, no. of? We've covered, covered most of it. Yeah. Watford. Watford. Well, for, yeah. For anyone who wondered, this actually is the. The fixtures for the next round of games on starting on Friday and ending on Friday night, I believe. And we'll be back here next Sunday where we'll go through the Watford game. Uh, so I can bring that out. Uh, you fancy a qu- yeah, see it Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, do you fancy a question of the week, Ben? I forgot one. We certainly do. We certainly do. I'm but quite intrigued really... actually to what it's going to be because it can't be who played for both. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <coughs> um, <laughs> it says, It's Mr. Tom's surprisingly good question of the week. That was John's opinion, by the way. Um, okay. Name the top 20 all time Leeds United goal scorers. These are your clues. I want to start at the bottom. So. You won't know who won. I'm going Rod, Rod Wallace at 19. Correct. John Styles. John Show. Uh, hang on, let me find the my cheat sheet for the answers. Uh, right, I've got it here. All right, so you got Rod Wallace. Cheers. Not John Styles, no. No. Number 18, he is Scottish, and I'll tell you when he played for Leeds, uh, to be fair. Uh, Oh, yeah, you're not going to get this. Uh, he played for Leeds 1962 to 1967. Uh, yep, correct. Uh, Peter Lorimer is obviously number one. Uh, Big Mark Viduka is... John Charles, Viduka number is, two. Yeah, yeah Viduka is 15. Alan Clark. Yep, Clark Terry, is, is three. Terry Jones, Terry Jones. Uh... No, it's not, Terry, it's not Terry Jones, but he is Scottish. And I, I think he played in 1920s or something. Um, right. 
Tommy Summer. Billy Bremner. Yep. Billy Bremner's there. I think Billy Bremner's five. Lee Johnny Chapman Giles, Mick Jones. Is, yeah, Lee Chapman is 14. Uh, Jack Charlton, obviously, is number nine. Uh, Chapman 14. It's not yeah. Chris, uh, it's not Chris Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Kamara. Um, so we've got another RW. Have we? Is it, is it, is it Brother Ray? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me see when that motherfucker played for Leeds. Uh, uh, oh. Lee Boyer. It's not Lee Bowie, I'm afraid. Uh, but he is he is a re fairly recent within the last sort of fifteen years. We've got Jermaine Beckford there, so that'll be yep. his strike partner. Luciano, yes. Johnny Giles um, is in at number six. Very good. A H. It's not Alfie Harland, is it? It's not. <laughs> uh, let me find. Eddie Gray. I'm stuck on BF as well. Uh, TJ like. played for played in oh, 1925 to 31. Yeah, never get that. Uh, yeah, Rod Wallace is correct. I'm sure Eddie Gray CK. is on there. CK. Uh, Eddie Gray is 16. Uh, Michael Jackson is on there, definitely. Calvin Klein, <laughs> yeah. Uh, You've missed, uh, you got most of the ones that we'd all know to be fair. So, what's missing is CK, RW, CK is another old one, CK is another one from like you pay for Leeds in 1927, RW at 10. RW played for Leeds, yeah, in the 1920s. It's not Lee Boy, so. Oh, it's Luciano, isn't it? Yeah, LC, Lee Chapman, Paducah, yeah. Eddie Gray. So it's just BF. BF played for Leeds. Nineteen twenty-eight to nineteen thirty-seven, two hundred and forty-three. It's got a lot of goals. So, yeah, it's got a lot of goals in twenties, didn't we? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Basically, we were the we we were clearly the uh, the Ipswich of the seven of the twenties with goals left, right, and centre. Apparently, but um... do you want to flash up the answers, me? I do. I do. That, oh, sorry. Oh, fucking hell. This was the, that was the amount of goals they scored. So, yeah. So, you just want to have a look at that. Peter Lauren has scored a lot. And that is the names. I've heard that's good. It's actually got Jerry Lawler to play Jerry Lawler. So, yeah, Peter Lorimer obviously with 238. I mean, nearly double the second place. John John Charles, uh, not double, that's not true. John Charles obviously went from, I think, Leeds to Juventus, didn't he? And then back to Leeds. Could be wrong there. Yeah. Um, 
Alan Clark. Ah, oh, fair enough. I was thinking of the one with Andy Kaufman. Um, Tom Jennings from the uh, 20s. Uh, Billy Bremen, obviously. Johnny Giles, Mick Jones. Jack Charlton there after Charlie Keatley. Yeah. Russell Wayne's that was man. That was man on the moon. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, Luciano, she's possibly the reason Cantona went to Man United. Because apparently he did all that, didn't he? And, uh, Allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly. Um, of course, yeah, you can say whatever you want as long as you say allegedly after it. But, um, or if you get a cartoon character to say it. or a puppet, <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, Luciano Becchio and his strike partner Jermaine Beckford throughout the uh late, late 2000s and uh, early 2010s. Arthur Hyde's Lee Chapman, obviously, the husband of Debbie Ash, uh, Mark Viduka, Eddie Gray, Albert Johansson, I believe, the first black player to play in the FA Cup final in 65, Excuse I believe. Me. Yeah. And uh, Jim, Jim Story. Story, yeah, who was, who was around. And Rodney Wallace. It's good to see Rodney Wallace in the top 20. I've got a lot of love for Rod who also then went on to win the Scottish Premier League with Glasgow Rangers before they became Sevco. Anyway, um, and Billy Furness rounding at the top 20. That Lee Chapman, Eric Cantona partnership to win last Division 1 was brilliant. I, at first, I read that as that Lee Chapman, Eric Cantona partnership to win Man United, the first Premier League title was brilliant. Uh, that Lee Chapman and Eric Cantona partnership on Leslie Ash was brilliant. <laughs> Which then led to the transfer of uh, Eric Cantona, allegedly. Allegedly, of course. But all good. All good. Yeah, Leslie Ash. I don't know why I said Debbie Ash. I was because Russ Morgan said Debbie Ash. I'll try it part herself. Leslie Ash from Men hmm. Behaving Badly, I believe. Anyway, that's right. a show. That's, that's a TV show on Earth. Um, uh, before we go, obviously, for the sake of the great director, John, who created a lot of graphics for this, and uh, just going to uh, go to NHL briefly with the New York Rangers doing incredibly well this season, I believe. Smashing it. Smashing it. Smashing it. They just beat the, the top two in consecutive games, which were Boston and Florida. It's now New York. So New York Rangers have a uh, they have a chance of getting the Stanley this year. Oh yeah, they had a chance last year, but they blew it against New Jersey. Didn't they? But, uh, they seem they seem they seem better equipped this time around. Okay. Your team, Mister Tom, are they in there? Yeah, they're ninth. We're not going to get the playoffs. It seems well. Unless a big turnaround occurs. Detroit chicken wings. Yeah. I wish they were chicken wings. I love chicken wings. <laughs> uh, that won't happen. And, uh, yeah, and football with brownie, obviously, because you can't have football with brownie without something in the style of football with brownie. I had a few Tommy Tanks over her back in the day. Debbie Ash or Leslie Ash, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, so join us next week where we'll go over the aftermath of Watford versus Leeds United on a Friday night. And for the sake of Mr. Brownie, there he is. There's your team, Brownie. Not in this half of the table. Good going, sir. Good going, sir. Wait, push for playoffs, Brownie. Eh? For your sake, sir, I hope you get it. More so if we're not in it, but I'm sure you understand. That being said, Russ, do you have a question for everyone this week? Or I've never heard of Florida in ice hockey. Uh, they're, Pan they're called the Panthers, aren't they? Mm. Uh, I think it's the last few years. That you, you can still overturn it, mate. Swansea defeat fucked us. Yeah, but the Ipswich win was unexpected to some degree, so... 
11th with negative goal difference. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Who was the 100th Leeds player to receive a full international cap for his country? Please tell me it was Junior Firpo. No. I think we had this. It was somewhere around the 2004 to 2008 era, I think. Fabian Delph. No, no, because he didn't play for England while he was at Leeds. So. David Ockin or someone, maybe. Mm. Patrick is Norbo. Oh, no, I've got one proper obscure. <laughs> Manuel Rui Marquez, who played for Angola in the 2006 World Cup. It was a mild obsession of mine on FIFA 06. Bailey Peacock, Farrell, Farrell Northern Ireland. <laughs> Can we have a clue, Ross? Assuming you know who the fuck it is. Oh, Patrick calls Norvo. Yeah. That, do you know what I think that, do you know what? Remember this it, is, don't you? No, Russ has done nothing wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that is the first ever Mr. Tom question of the week. I'm pretty sure it's one it of was. Them. Cause, one of them. Yeah. It, so was some, like, it was the last international break, I think. I feel like I've asked that, but before we settled into the routine of like, here's a list of 20 yeah, when things. It, when it came out, the 600 Legion 80 questions quiz book. It may well have done, yeah. Um, but no, seriously, thank you to everyone who uh, has uh, given their time to watch us. It's thank you. very humbling, very cool. Um, thank you to Ben for putting the effort in for basically showing you 99% of the things you saw today. Um, truly enjoy this. and I'm surprised we've gone nearly two hours, but it always surprises me. And Not obviously, again. we do love Director John, who has, uh, again, anything on this show that you like to look of was probably made by him. So, um, including the diagrams and the, the lists and the fixture lists and Hell, even this, even this, but um, because I, I wouldn't put that together. I'll tell you straight up, I would not put this together, but I would have the audacity to ask John to uh, put it together. Like, you think I've got time? <laughs> you think I got time to do that? I was like, yeah, it's Wednesday, you so clearly yes, did. you clearly did. In between going down to Manhattan and sorting out some Italian passports for people. Dodgy guy. He knows a guy. I've got the times to ask you. But yeah, that being said. Uh, also, I'll, for, uh, for anyone who wondered, uh, our prediction next week, I, I earlier in the month said it'd be a draw. Ben said we'd win 1-0. I hope Ben is right, obviously. That was before we uh, hit the top and all that. So I uh, slapped myself on the wrist for my lack of faith. But anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, happy Easter, Con. Thank you, Mr. Con Shay. Again, thank you for your support and stuff. Very kind of you. And thank you for that, Mr. Brownie. And thank you for that, Mr. Russ Morgan. And to anyone who's watching but hasn't commented, no harm in putting a comment in the comment section or something. Let us know that you watched it and what you... I don't care what you thought about it, but your opinions on stuff. Not the worst thing in the world, so you know, whatever. So, so I'm 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 filibustering while I'm deleting all the stuff. So sorry. Um, yeah. So, okay. On that note, it's a good night from me. It's a good night from me. Leads, leads, leads. Easy, please.